We had Nick Fisher come over today, and I gotta be honest, Nick, this was a fun build for me. Let me kinda highlight what we did to the bow, and then really the most important thing is Nick tunes completely different than the way I've been taught, and that is cool for you guys. You can take his best practices. We'll break it down right now. So I swapped out for the elk-shaped side plates. I'm running for Stobbs. We got a 15-inch Mountain Series with no weight up front. I like a longer bar. I like the, how that pen floats. On the back end, we're using this shrewd attachment. It's the bridge lock back bar, and we have five ounces on the back, and it's not too far from the string. Speaking of the string, it is zebra. I do plan on swapping that out for uh, custom strings. That's just kind of my style. Trying the Matthews Integrate from QAD, and that's a competitor to Nick. So applaud Nick for being willing and open to, to put a competitor's rest on and install it, and you got to learn a little bit about that. We'll have you talk on that a little bit. We're gonna check the center serving. Don't use the tips of your calipers, they're gonna squeeze down too hard. Your knock is not that size. All right. Wow. 116, 117. Ooh, that's a little higher than what you said was yeah. tolerable. Yeah, maybe 115 there. Um, you know, trying to get in here where our knock is gonna be. I mean, the tips will be gentle. 115 and a half. That is no bueno. Okay. That's gonna apply an amount of pressure where the knock is really being stressed. It's gonna make tune difficult. The amount of force that requires the knock to pop off now, we're gonna lose efficiency. And then it really, fortunately when I designed the IP series of knocks, they're designed to handle 115 up to 115s. But there are dozens of knocks on the market that you will damage knocks with. You'll notice your snap feature starts getting loose. Um, you're stressing the material. Most of the knocks on the market are made out of polycarbonate and just pure polycarbonate. We can't put glass in them because it takes away the flexibility in the knock. It makes it brittle, which can cause it to explode on the shot. We don't want any of that. So there's limitations to what we got to do there. And it's just so simple. Just to, again, the bow manufacturers, the string manufacturers, throw a pair of calipers on there and check it. They're at 112, that's still high. Buy some center serving material. You don't gotta change your process. Just buy some material that's a thou or two smaller so that we can hit 110. Again, I'm a 108 guy, 108, 19, 109. I want that thing, that knock to be nice and, and not being retained it's by- like move that, that move that arrow and see what, show them what, they're talk, what you're kind of talking about here, this play. You see how tight that snaps on? Yeah. Look at that arrow. Look how tight it's gripping the arrow. Oh, that's not you good. should be able to spin this thing and that not, not move. And then listen to the force it takes for this thing to come off. I mean, look how much it's pulling on the string. Uh, not good. You should be able, a great test on center serving is to just pluck the string. That should be all you need to do and the arrow should come off. That ain't, ain't not at all. Holy, that's that's pretty nice. Boy, I mean, you can kind of tell there's not a whole lot to say here. If I was to say anything, it's maybe a tiny bit low left, but boy, sure, not very much. Really, it's a fantastic starting point. We'll take this outside and start bare shaft tuning. Um, but we know this arrow's at least starting fairly straight out of the bow. We'll see what it does when it dynamic spine reacts and we get farther out there. But this is a really great starting point. It is cable driven on the down cable. Historically, I haven't been a fan of that, but I am gonna put it through its paces. On the rest, we did do a little bit of um, heat shrink tubing, 
we'll see how it goes. It does have a little play in it, which I don't know about that. I guess we'll see. I'm super stoked about the Canyon Pounder and we're going to see Dan Evans and have him run through this Canyon Pounder and all the things at his house. Can't wait to bring that to you guys. I am gonna run a one piece quiver on the side. We didn't attach that yet. And then as far as the peep, it's a 730 seconds. I do have the nose button. And all in all, the bow is super tuned thanks to you. But you did it completely different than I've ever done it before. Let's have you recapping your tuning process. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, one of the things that's super and critical to me in the very beginning is set a draw length to a known weight length that you like. We took your match 29, matched the draw length there, got the cam timing the same. Um, that's super important just for the comfortability. I mean, so many people just, they're gonna set mods and go, okay, the bow's at 27 inches. Right. Well, it, it doesn't take much for a twist and a cable here or there for that bow to be 27 and 3 eighths or 26 and a three quarter. An eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch can really make a big difference in how well the bow holds for you. So we matched that up, went through the process of getting those cams timed up. And then for me, the next step, you know, we, we shot a few arrows through paper, got a decent hole started and went out and we dove into torque tuning. As you guys can tell, it's raining, so we need to get this thing doped in first. Nick's got a hack for that. One of the things, if you've ever shot a bunch of short range targets or whatever, that a generalization is that three yards will shoot close enough to get started at 50. Okay. So we want to get this thing at three yards, which we're actually probably a little outside of three here, as close to dead on the middle at three yards. And that at least should be a safe starting point for us to go straight to 50 yards. Uh, which we're going to be pretty close on your uh, next target out there from this point. All right, that's pretty gosh darn close. Just left of it, two solid arrows, man. Okay, so this next arrow, this is where we're going to get into torque tuning. As I explained in there, Dan's going to come to draw, torque the bow to the left, hold it torqued. You don't want to go extreme and risk derailing the boat. Just apply some nice torque to the left. The bubble's going to go. The bubble it will only move if the bow tilts. You still want to make sure the boat bubble gets re-leveled. OK. Hold the torque, recenter the peep, and execute as best a shot as you can. OK. OK. Good shot. Yeah, definitely surprise release. Okay. But surprised to see it go right. I thought I was torquing left. Right. So this is the, where I was mentioning before. If it goes in the direction that you torque it, you need to expand the distance. If it goes in the opposite direction, you shorten the distance. So we need as to move the, rice, the sight in. That's awesome news because that's how I roll usually. Well, and that was, if you remember, I had originally set the sight in based on knowing limb pocket angles, your draw length. Okay. So um, yeah, we're in the middle of the sight bar right now. So we will find the appropriate tool. So even if you don't have the prophecy, you could, st if you're running a dovetail, you, you can, can still, still torque, torque tune. tune. Yeah. Let's do the opposite scenario. Let's say uh, I'm bubbling, or I'm sorry, I'm torquing to the right, and I shoot, and it goes to the right. Same thing. Same the sight deal. would go up. You sight would go it up. It doesn't matter which way you torque it. It just depends on which way the arrow goes in regard to the torque. So again, now we've moved the sight, so our impact point's going to change. I'm going to run out there in the rain, grab those arrows, and we get to start that process again. He moved the sight all the way, well, to about an inch? Yeah, about, well, yeah, on this, about an inch, two clicks in. That's about as close as it can really get, too, by the way. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if we'll get one more click without it getting in the way of the cables. Okay, we're two inches high and inch right. Shoot one more. All right, they almost touched. Dan's got it going today. All right, let's see the torque shot. It kind of freaks me out on purpose torquing. Yeah, you know it I mean? is. It like freaks me out. I'm like, this, this is not good. What's interesting you can see is both times we've torqued it, it's impacted low too. So that is causing some sort of torsional difference. Now, the amount of torque you're applying here is generally more than you ever would. That's more than I ever would have. Right. So even if you're in a funky situation, taking a funny shot, but you can see that arrow is only an inch right now instead of six. Fact. You brought me way in. All right, so now, now on an animal. Oh, on an animal, that's the difference between a liver gut shot or a, a liver, gut shot, yeah. or we made a good shot. Shoot, that's awesome. All right, so now torque it to the right. Okay. It's in the group. No way, because I told. 
I have torque and shot. All right, guys, let's go show you. We'll bring you down there. These were his first two arrows. They're freaking touching. And one of the things to touch on here too, guys, again, we haven't leveled the sight. This is a mathematical equation depending on your draw length, limb pocket angle, the grip position. I'm a firm believer in shooting in your second axis. Um, and you'll see why when we start shooting bear shafts here because an arrow is a curve ball. It is spinning, it curves. If you are in long range rifle shooting, you know, we have spin drift. Think of baseball throwing a curve ball. You're spinning that thing, it curves to set a bow perfectly level and say, okay, my left and right impact is going to be fine. It's not going to be. And the farther you get out, depending on whether you're shooting right or left helical, the farther that thing's going to get off. To be very accurate at long range, you actually need to shoot with the bow tilted one way or the other, depending on which direction your arrow's spinning. This process here is early on because it is just a simple math equation that I don't know the equation for. We just know how to physically alter the results. For me, torque tuning again is just, it's super critical for every level of archer, but particularly it's something that hasn't been applied to bow hunting much. We're never, again, I've said this repeatedly, we're never in a perfect shooting position. So teaching you the torque tuning position, fortunately we didn't have to make a real big adjustment, but you saw right away the difference in the response, working the bow left and right both ways and how we were able to eliminate that variance pretty quick. For those guys out there that like, oh, I like a longer brace height, one of the cool things about torque tuning, it eliminates the concern about brace height. You can actually take advantage of that power stroke, get a faster bow with a shorter brace height because you know, every inch of brace height you're taking off is essentially adding to your drawing. T-Rex arms here. <laughs> yeah, no, you can say it. No, that's that was interesting, guys. So the torque tuning methodology, if you wanna really geek out, we're gonna do another video. In fact, it'll be the next video. And it's gonna feature the AE Prophecy, which is coming out 2023. That's a total nerd out session on how to torque tune proper. And it's one of the first steps if you're gonna run that rest, and it's gonna be a good option for many of you. All right, guys, so before we head out, one of the things I like to do when we start bear shaft tuning at longer distances is I really want the arrows to weigh the same, particularly because I want the same amount of weight on the back of the shaft. So get yourself some electrical tape, duct tape works as well. We're gonna check the fletched arrow here, 433 grains, bear shaft, 414. So we need maybe 415, 28, 29 grains of tape. Believe it or not, that's not very much tape. So starting at roughly in the same spot his veins are, we'll just make one pass down. Don't know what that's gonna weigh. We're gonna take a guess. You could strip off a run of tape and trim it to length to where it makes up the amount you want. That might be the intelligent way to go. I've done that before, but we're just gonna do it this way to start and see what we get here. 431, 431 and a half, or a grain and a half light, which in all theory is perfectly fine. Plus or minus five grains, you hear guys, <laughs> You hear guys all go, oh, my arrows, they're all within a grain of each other. Not even plus or minus a grain. Within one grain total, plus or minus a half a grain. 50 yards, five grains variance. 99.8% of the world cannot shoot the difference. Bear shaft, 30 yards. A lot of people do 20. I just know you can really iron details out at 30. Yeah, basically the impact, I mean, Coming into a foam target that's already got been shot up and got holes into it, it's hard to say with the arrow angle, but it is lower, so I would say that we're, the point's starting to take over a little bit. You do, you are running a pretty fair amount of FOC here, so there could be a little bit of that, of just that weight of that point starting to take over a little bit, causing that to tip down. Overall, I mean, this thing's shooting laser beam. The next step from here to really refine the tune even more is on a day that you're fresh and we don't have a little breeze and everything is to go into a, a line tuning. And basically this site, this refresh these lines, go back to 50. I like doing a lot of stuff at 50 yards. Um, you'll hear guys talk about doing line tuning at 80. Those are the guys who can really shoot. And then you're gonna shoot a series of arrows on the vertical line, moving your rest left and right, cause maybe they come in and you'll have one here, one on the line, one over here. And you're gonna just make small adjustments on the rest left and right to see how that affects your forgiveness here. Right. And then same thing on the horizontal line, moving the rest a couple clicks up and down, seeing how, again, that affects your forgiveness. Now, if you are running a QAD, there's a couple things I wanna end this video with, like suggestions. One, pick up the QD wedge from AAE instead of the football. It goes inside the down cable, it splits, there's not, we didn't have to add extra serving, it's super adjustable. And we made sure that when the bow's at full draw, that this is facing towards the riser. Number two, 
they sell this pig skin. It's a material we, we call pig skin, but it's a material that um, we adapt and works incredibly well on the launcher to silence the draw. You know, everybody all the time has issues, squeaky arrows when you're drawing the arrow, whether they're wet, they're dry, something gets on it. This is a hunting channel, and that is a North Star for us is to have stealth. So I think the one, you know, if I had that, I would put that instead of just heat shrinking and what comes with QAD, I would, they're gonna sell that at their website, check that out. They also have this cool little sleeve that goes on top of your shelf, like it catches the arrow, quiets it down, and they sell a little felt that you can put here so you don't tink your arrow when you're loading while in a hunting situation. Guys, this bow is shooting bullets. We did the torque tune, we ended up moving the compression in, we done did the bear shaft. We shot the bear shaft with the flesh out to 30. All this just to super tune, add some additional steps, but man, is it worth it? Your confidence will bolster and it'll be more fun to shoot a bow that's that more accurate. Guys, we appreciate your support. Tap the sub, check out AEE Archery. This is Nick Fisher. We'll catch you on the next one.